My name is Kate Vanderzee. I uh, live in Alliston, Ontario. I farm with my husband and sons and daughters. Our main crop is potatoes. It's our livelihood. It's our passion. Potatoes should make you feel inadequate, but it kind of does. It's like we're still struggling to do better. So we grow chip stock potatoes. So our potatoes are grown to make potato chips. I think growing potatoes, you know, we really disturb the soil tremendously through the planting and harvesting process. And so I'm really cognizant of what we do outside of that potato time. So we'll do six month growing potatoes and I'll have an 18 month break before it will come back to potatoes again. And it will constantly have a crop growing. It's typically anything that will be a winter crop that we can put in after potatoes. So right now it's, it's been winter wheat, but we're switching to some uh, hybrid rye, winter barley. Um, we tried winter canola last year. As soon as that wheat is taken off, we'll either chop the straw, we might take the straw off, We'll exchange it for manure. And I am a big believer in this multi-species cover crop. You can see it and feel it in the ground. Our ground responds. And I thought it was most important for the sandy fields, but we've seen tremendous results with the heavier soil. It's really doing the tillage for us. It's allowing an incredible amount of water infiltration. That you don't have clumps anymore. It's making that we can harvest the crop. Those are the benefits of all these, these these, um, the cover crops and especially you know the deeper roots the wider roots like we need to do everything we need to, to, to build up all the topsoil that we have lost my husband and I we have a university degree from the University of Guelph crop science majors so it's not that we hadn't learned a, a lot about it but really what we were doing was balancing the soil as far as uh, nutrients that was the big key and, and managing weeds, chemicals, 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 perfectly straight rows, because that's close to God or something. I'm not sure what it is. I thought we were doing a really good job. And then when I started to look into it, having that bubble burst that, oh my goodness, there's so much more. We didn't think about the soil. We just thought about losing part of the top so we didn't think about how we could be building so we didn't think about the soil organisms there's so much more so much complexity to the soil it's not prescription farming it's not doing the same thing every year every field whatever it's not just playing a little bit with the the nutrition because the fields are different it's now looking at the ground looking at the field looking at the system and it's it's a constantly moving it's great to grow potatoes in this area because this is basically a glacial lake bottom. So there is beautiful soil here. It's great because of our family and our extended family. We're very blessed to have a lot of us here. What's really tough here, which is again a plus minus, is our proximity to the city. So there's a lot of uh, competition for our land. So we're really feeling the squeeze to whether we'll be able to keep on farming here for many more generations. It's, it's unfortunate and I'm hopeful that we will be able to show our children and our grandchildren how to love the land and how to listen to the land and how to see what's going on. We're not afraid to get out of our comfort zone and we're not afraid to fail trying. And I think that's what people need to do. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You need to try and you'll, you'll, you'll see the difference, but it's not gonna be prescriptive. You're gonna have to start, and this is where, you're gonna have to start farming again. You can't farm from your office. You need to be out in the field.